All right. You can now begin by taking a few deep, relaxing breaths, getting yourself comfortable, getting yourself oriented now to enter into internal experience for a while so that you can really enjoy the balance between conscious awareness and unconscious awareness. Let each breath relax you. Let your thoughts run loose for a while. Run loose until they tire themselves out. And then, little by little, they can slow, becoming very slow, so that more and more of your mental energy can be spent on learning at the deepest levels within yourself of the experience of comfort about the experience of being so distant from all the usual focal points of your awareness so that you can really know deeply that all the inner terrain, your inner landscape can be traveled comfortably looking at this natural formation and that natural formation, the feelings and thoughts, the historical markers, your curiosity, and a very, very deep recognition of inner capabilities, things that perhaps others overlooked others did not notice, or maybe were just too tied up in their own issues to know and appreciate as gifts. And it's interesting, isn't it, to observe the evolution, what the experience of development is like, to see a newly born baby and no one really knows whether the baby thinks or what the baby thinks. And to watch an infant discover its own fingers, its own toes, to see the amused look on an infant's face when it discovers that it can make a finger wiggle, not something else. It can make a finger wiggle at will. And thus, little by little, that infant learns. This is my body, and it is separate and distinct from any other part of the world, from all other people and places and things. And each square inch of your skin is a boundary between your inner world and the outer world. And it really is not possible for you to jump out of your skin. You are self-contained and your awareness moves beyond your skin. A quarter of an inch, an inch, a foot, whether you are looking or not, you know your boundaries and can feel them. You are able to tell where you are in space and in time. You are self-contained and aware. And it's interesting that there are some people who choose not to have a home in which to live who believe that the sky is their roof, the earth is their home. And then there are others who mark off huge territories 
acres of land. They clearly mark that it is theirs, and each wall keeps something out and lets something stay in. And there are walls of stone, walls of wood, steel reinforced walls. And there are the walls that you can build for yourself, deliberately and happily, that are permeable, the kind that can selectively let things in and let things out. And it's that kind of a wall that allows just enough distance from discomfort to be able to drive down a freeway comfortably. It is the kind of permeable wall that when someone makes a comment during a conversation that perhaps you can relate to, it permits a comfortable distance, a protective distance from which to consider each bit of input no need to react. And you can feel secure that each person's feedback to you will have to check in at your front gate before you decide to let it in or not, before you decide whether to react or not. And if you react, Time to decide how you will react based on what works and feels good at the deepest levels within yourself. These walls help you know you are safe so that you don't need to feel afraid or angry unless it is called for. You can feel secure that only as much will come through as you are ready and able to handle. So why not have a construction party and build a pretty wall and a creative wall? And I wonder what colors you will use, what material you will use. And what does your check-in gate look like? And how very, very much room is there for lots and lots of growth? And the walls can always be moved when you so desire. They can be built up or built down. You can put in peepholes and panoramic windows. After all, these walls are yours. And all I know is that the ability to walk into an open space has, at one level, unlimited freedom. But at another level, where's the structure to guide experience meaningfully? And when a friend moved into this one particular office, it was a huge space. He had to draft a plan detailing how many walls he wanted and where he wanted them, how many outlets and how many doors. And did he want the doors opening in or opening out? How many on switches and how many off switches. And there is a part of you that knows very well that designing uses for space is a real art. And you have discovered over time that each part of you, all the parts of you, have some space. even parts you didn't know you were ready to accept, even parts 
you didn't know how to let in yet. You have been clever enough to build space for their own space that meets their own needs and allows them to completely come forward and be taken care of. And how you want to use that space is certainly a matter of individual design. And the aesthetics of a high wall here or a low wall there, more space for this part, less space for that part. And you can really enjoy the incredible clarity that comes along with increasingly sophisticated designs. Movable and removable walls. As a matter of fact, what a relief to know that you can build a waiting room where when people say things and you're too busy to hear in process, these things can go and wait until you are able to hear and process and understand. What a relief to know that nothing that you experience need necessarily flow right through all of you. That you have lots of inner protection, walls of inner strength. And you've seen pictures of the Great Wall of China You've heard of the Wailing Wall, and you've read about the Berlin Wall. You know about Wall Street, and maybe you've even heard about Wall Drug South Dakota and the natural wall of the Rocky Mountains, the sheer cliff walls of La Jolla. And with all the different possibilities, your unconscious mind can without any real effort on your part, it can plan and build. And if you were to work for the Border Patrol, you'd really know about the importance of enforcing and protecting the walls that separate inner from outer 24 hours a day seven days a week. One really must protect one's borders only as much as is necessary. Letting through those who are safe only as much as is safe. And as a matter of fact, the nice thing is that you can discover when you have a border patrol you don't need to spend the energy patrolling the border yourself. Indeed, that you can allow the border patrol to track and sort and let things through so that you can have even more energy to focus on what you need to focus on and to do what you need to do. And isn't it refreshing to know there is someone watching out for you, letting in only as much as needs to come in, and letting out everything that needs to go out. And there are a lot of deeper meanings that I really know you can absorb and use a day at a time. And so, take your time to process, to architect, plan. And then, when you feel like you want to, and when you are ready to, that's when you can reorient and open your eyes to be awake, alert, refreshed, recharged, energized, now. Open your eyes, stretch, wiggle your toes, 
and take this energy with you back into life.